If you've ever had your ping spike or suffered from packet loss in game, especially when you're on a tear and lose, it's super frustrating, especially in a battle royale. Because it's game over, more than likely you've experienced something called buffer bloat. Data packets for time sensitive apps like games or voice over IP can get delayed because something is running in the background on your computer or perhaps on other computers or devices on your network are using your network bandwidth. Has that caught your attention? Stick around and we're going to go deeper into this. Common things that can utilize your network bandwidth are Windows Update, iPhone and iPad apps, or iOS updates, Android updates, Battle.net, photo and video synchronization, and so forth. In recent versions of Windows 10, you have the ability to control this. Simply go to the Start menu, go to Settings, then go to Updates and Security. Go to Delivery Optimization, Advanced Options, in absolute bandwidth, put a check and limit how much bandwidth is used for downloading updates in the background. Now you can set this to 1%. For example, if you have a 100 meg connection, 1% will be 1 megabit. Pretty conservative, right? Put a check mark in limit how much bandwidth is used for downloading updates in the foreground. In other words, if you have nothing running on your computer, set it to 5% of your bandwidth. Now, if you have more than one computer, then you may want to reduce that number because if you leave your computers on all the time, then Windows can assume 5% for everything. And that can start to build up quickly, especially if you have more than one computer. Game stores like Battle.net and Steam can control this as well, but you can't control this on an iPhone or iPad. There is a way to mitigate buffer bloat. First, ensure only one computer is connected to your router, then go to the DSL report speed test site and run a buffer bloat test. You can simply find this by going to Google and searching DSL reports speed test. It is strongly recommended to use an ethernet or wire connection from your PC to the router to eliminate any sort of wireless interference as a factor. By doing this, you'll be able to maximize your download and upload bandwidth during the test. Keep an eye on the buffer bloat section of the test. Ideally, this number should be anywhere between 0 and 10 milliseconds. The closer to 0, the better. When the test is done, you'll receive a score, and ideally it should be A+. Hit the button, Results, and Share. Your idle, download, and upload in milliseconds should be pretty close together. Scroll down further to the bottom, and you'll find the number of retransmits. They should be at 0%, and of course, the lower the percentage, the better. Run this a few times to confirm the consistency. If the jitter or buffer bloat is at 20 milliseconds or higher and retransmits are above 1% or a combination, you'll need to enable Smart Queue Management or SQM on your router. If your router does not have this functionality, then you may need to look into acquiring a router such as the Linksys WRT3200ACM and update it to OpenWRT. Alternatively, if you have an old computer that you're not using and you have two Ethernet adapters or network cards sitting around such as an Intel i210 series, then you could install OpenWRT on a USB stick and use that PC to boot as a router. Let me know in the comments if you want to see how you can do either option. My internet connection today is one gigabit, upload and download. And it's using a fiber connection, so it's pretty solid. However, as you can see, my buffer bloat is pretty high as I'm using my ASUS AX11000 router. And by the way, I am converting my fiber directly to ethernet without a router. So it's a direct connection to the ISP, so I do not have an additional router in between. If you go into the QoS section of your router, you have the opportunity to lower or set a speed limit. Now in this example, I tried lowering it down to 700 and I'm getting similar results. The same with 500. And even as I lower it much further to 100 megabit, I'm actually getting an increase in retransmits, which is actually worse. It might be okay in an RTS game like StarCraft or Civ 6, but in an FPS like Fortnite or COD or Valorant, this isn't good because a data packet or message coming from the server or being sent to the server is at risk of failing. That means it's sending it again or it could be sending it again. That is not good at all. Now I'm able to see the same or similar results with the XR500, though the XR500 has a better way of handling retransmits. But again, if I lower it down to 100 megabit, 
the retransmits are actually much higher than the ASUS AX11000. One of the issues with retail routers, they don't allow you to specify the size of your data packets, and that can be very crucial when sending a message to and from the server. Cable has its own settings, fiber has its own settings. If you have voice over IP, that adds another complexity and so forth. These really need to be known to get everything down to as low as possible. Unfortunately, OpenWRT has this capability. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into OpenWRT and take a look at the settings. Major disclaimer here. OpenWRT is an open source firmware mod, and many people have spent time making it better, making it compatible with certain routers, even for it to be used on a PC. But if you decide to update OpenWRT, you are completely responsible and assume all risk involved. You risk breaking the router if it's incorrectly flashed. So if you don't know what you're doing, talk to a tech friend to see if they can help you out or ask a tech. And for goodness sakes, do not do this on your ISP's router. You could get into a lot of trouble. So like a Linksys or a D-Link router has that capability of being flash. Proceed with caution because you could also be out of warranty by doing this procedure. Anyway, for educational purposes, let's carry on. The SQM or Smart Queue Management has to be specified for multiple devices. To keep buffer bloat minimized and to reduce retransmit as much as possible, we're going to set up a SQM for WAN or your internet and the LAN, the local area network. On this router as well, it has an algorithm called CAKE and CAKE seems to be more optimized for lower latency, at least from a reduction of buffer bloat and retransmit perspective. We're gonna set up WAN and LAN for 700 megabit down and up, and that is 70% of my internet speed. And the reason why we're making changes to LAN is again, to keep buffer bloat minimized. I'll also be setting up the appropriate overhead settings as well as packet settings for a fiber-based connection without voice over IP. If you do decide to pursue OpenWRT, there is a form there, which I would strongly recommend to ask questions, but keep in mind, it can be a very technical heavy form. So if you don't know what you're doing, just say, you know, hey, I'm not technical. I just want to figure out how I can reduce my buffer bloat or reduce my latency somehow. And uh, as long as you ask nicely, someone will likely be able to help you out. So as we run the test again, there is still some buffer bloat and a little bit of retransmits. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this number. And I only know this number because I've been testing this for a bit. And I'm going to set this down to 530,000 or 530 megabit. We'll make the changes and rerun the test. As you can see, there's hardly any buffer bloat, hardly any jitter, no retransmits. This is perfect. One to two milliseconds is really, really good. The reason why I can't use the full gigabit is because it's CPU intensive to use SQM or Smart Key Management. For example, if you look at the Edge Router X by Ubiquity, it can only go up to 100 or 150 megabit using Smart Key Management. That's because it is CPU limited. If you do have questions such as where is SQM located, where is QS located on your router, please check with your manufacturer's website or simply search online. I'll not be able to answer all the questions because there's hundreds of thousands of different routers and different configures within that. Thanks for watching everyone. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Here's a couple of videos you might like and until next time, take care.